Okay, so it looks like so it we're is now a little bit. doing the thing. Um, you know, like, I need like to know. Can I run, run it, jump right into this while you're doing that? Uh, he's 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 gonna yeah he's gonna get one thing and then we're gonna start. I'm gonna clean the lens thing. Oh, sir. Just wanna. Oh, I'm sorry. There, it looks, yeah. looks so much better. All right, you. So, like, this little. That used to be a red dot. You just hit it, and then the timer starts on. So, kick it off, ladies and gentlemen. Give a round of applause because I'm drunk again. Yeah, sacred checklist. And sacred poll list. And the sacred Romanian list. We got all the lists. <laughs> We're listing to the right. We're listing. We need to list back to the left. So, welcome to Sacred Grounds with. Damn Brady! Oh, That's the current host of the this. The longest running open mic in the known and unknown and previously known universes, serving up good food, fine poetry since 1972. Ooh. Tonight's co pilot is. Miguel! Give him a round of applause. Miguel! Right next to me. The the big hand. Also, for Teddy and the invisible Fiona, our host. And applause. please support this reading by enjoying the food and drink served here. Here, here. They're there. Poetry of all kinds, ladies and gents, is welcome here. We respect the mic. That means keeping conversations to a minimum and to a slight whisper. Putting phones on mute, vibrate, airline mode, or just tossing them out the door. Not disturbing the poet while they're speaking. Do not throw tomatoes or lemons. Walking in front of them, crawl in front of them. Say and keep keeping to the time limit, usually only five minutes. But well, that can change, change in an alternate universe. Yeah. If you want to know what is going on here, you're going to find out. Yeah. Get on the emailing list or join the Facebook. Uh oh. Facebook. Facebook. Join the, fa join the Facebook group at your own peril. At your own risk. Please note our streaming link and our, and our steaming milk. It's handy in five ways. Five. Count them. Count them. Five. Why? You can conveniently view enough from home. You can view conveniently enough from home. You can, you can view enough conveniently from home. Or family and friends can see you live. Or live. later on. Just step outside. Want to hear so-and-so's poem again? You Probably. can. Billy so-and-so and his brother Jackie so-and-so. Do a self-critique. No problemo, mi amigo. And it is a way to put out the word. Yours, mine, ours, minutes, days, years. Put out the word. Put out the word. And that brings us to the ongoing theme. Never doubt that a small group of committed citizens can change the world. Indeed. And in action. It's the only thing that ever has. Margaret Mead. The evening's theme is... The evening's theme, I'm sorry. Change. Change. Thank you, Brian Doherty, our teacher. That's really specific. Okay. Pacific, yes. Pacific. That's really Pacific. We're pleased to say our feature is... Our teacher is... Martin Hickler right over there. Martin, Martin yeah. Right yeah. Right we'll get the Queen's the... wave. Tonight's phone. keynote is... <laughs> the keynote oh, is fun. Tommy Evercolumbeco. Tommy, 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 Tommy. While our mini feature is... Our mini Owen. feature is Owen Dunham. Owen. Yeah. Owen to Owen. And the last word is... Rob. 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 Why is that Rob. Rob. Why is that with a w? Someone remind Dan to make a feature clip. And uh, now for our uh, now for our fabulous door prizes. Oh, the door prizes! So we have this. Now we have something amazing here. These three CDs contain sixty different poets who are famous from a long time ago till currently. Reading their poems, a little bit of an introduction. So it's it's really cool. There, uh, that's one set. This is shapely selected poems, formal poems by Jack B. C. And uh, this is fantasy and science fiction. It's actually a pretty good anthology. I read a couple of them already, so this is good. Now this, if you look at this fine tome, this was found in a dumpster. And it was horribly maligned, but I fixed the outside cover. This is The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann. And this Ooh. thing was put together in 1948, because that's the latest tape that's inside here. So this thing is kind of old, has everything. The pages are in good shape. I did fix the bind in the inside, so now it's, it sticks together. You belong to Rick. Yes. Fantasy and science fiction. Fantasy and science fiction. And this is Orphan City, my first, the th first time I ever put anything together. <coughs> it's, it's right here. And then these are also, yes? These are also, also. 
They were up here. Me. Uh, I think they were for you. They were just. Like, oh, for me. Okay. To you. <laughs> okay. I thought that they were here. Okay, but thank you. Awesome. All right. I'm gonna put these where I will not. Oh. Okay. Oh. If you wish to record someone, yes, ask permission. permission. We will assume you've done so. Should any of us notice recordings being made? Recording being made. And make sure you're on pitch if you're making a recording. That's right. Thank you so much, David. Give him a round of applause if you need that. We're getting ready to stick it off here. Proposition one. Oh, you don't have to do that. No, no not this time. I'm not looking at proposition two. No, pro proposition two. two. Much, it's actually, that's more serious. But proposition two is a way to get to that one. All right, our, oh, okay, so, okay, so our, our keynote, Tommy Avakola Mecca, is approaching the mic carefully. Give him around as he goes up here. Wake it up. So I'm, hello, 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 there I am. <laughs> so I'm going to read from this book, which is out of print. It was published in 1988. It's called Gay and Lesbian Poetry in Our Time. And, um, I don't know if anybody here knows the book, but there's this strange person in the book. Yeah. Who yeah, is that's that? That's me. That's me. <laughs> when you were young? Yeah, man. When I was very young. And oh, was, okay. Not really. Um, <laughs> anyway, but I'm not reading my poem. Um, man. I'm going to be reading a poem by Essex Hempel. What a tease. Who, um, well, yeah. well, you're supposed to read a poem by somebody else. Yeah, somebody else. else. So I'm going to read a poem by Essex Hempel, who was this amazing African-American gay male poet. Um, who unfortunately died 20 years ago of AIDS. Uh, but he was a friend of mine, and we often performed on the same stages in Philadelphia, my hometown. He was from DC, but he came to Philly a whole lot. Um, wrote some of the most amazing poetry imaginable. And I was fortunate enough to see him right before he died. He was here in San Francisco, so I got to at least hug him one last time before he left us. So I'm gonna read this poem, and I'm gonna to try to do it without crying, because I love Essex, and I really, I miss him tremendously. Crying's allowed, it's okay. Yeah, crying's allowed, I know, yeah, I know. I drink champagne early in the morning instead of leaving my house with an M16 and nowhere to go. I die twice as fast as any other American between 18 and 35. This disturbs me, but I try not to show it in public. Each morning I open my eyes is a miracle. The blessing of opening them is temporary on any given day. I could be taken out. I could go off. I could forget to be careful. Even my brothers hunt it, hunt me. I'm the only one who values my life and sometimes I don't give a damn. My love life can kill me. I'm faced daily with choosing violence or a demeanor that saves every other life but my own. I won't cross over. It's time someone came to me not to patronize me physically, sexually, or humorously. I'm sick of being an endangered species, sick of being a goddamn statistic. So what are my choices? I could leave with no intention of coming home tonight. Go crazy downtown and raise hell on a rooftop with a rifle. I could live for a brief moment on the six o'clock news or masquerade another day through the corridors of commerce and American dreams. I'm dying twice as fast as any other American. So I pour myself a glass of champagne. I cut it with a drop of orange juice. After I swallow my liquid Valium, my private celebration for being alive this morning, I leave my shelter. I guard my life with no apologies. My concerns are small and personal. I want it when you're done. Okay. You want it when he's done? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do mine in advance. Oh, okay. that's right. You're smart. Oh yeah, so now it's uh Bob, are you ready? Yeah. You're gonna be from there? I'm here. Alright. Should I point it to him? No, no, because it, it, it will show other people and so we just let him read from there and then we go to Brit here after that. Alright, I'm gonna read uh, three poems. Uh, the first one is to a son that I never had. Uh, although my ex roommate Ardo is uh, has been like a son. Though you do not now exist, for me I do. Though 
you are not here for the asking. My son, my speech is forgotten memory. But perhaps you're being someone whom I can dream still, though you dream too. Long before your never birth, I came to the questions formulated in your sleep. I would have made you a good father, grand in all your trying solo circumstances. Then I would have dreamed your talking back to me out of a long, long experience. How can you have fathered if you would say, if not for a love that came from knowledge? And all of our deep wishes would come back to me. No, you do not know this to me. I think of you in a heaven where we could spend the time to us well given, undoing the time that never was. And remember, I love you with a heart that's given away to love and never touch, but the life that would be yours, as if that were enough to bring you to me, your loving father, the poet of these words. Peter, give him a round of applause, please. Hey, Peter. While he's getting set up, I forgot to mention five five of the door prizes that aren't books. There's choosing the theme for next week, which uh, Brian D. did with the, the idea of change. The keynote, which Tommy just did. The last word, which Rob will do. The mini feature, which we had, I think, two of tonight, because I think I made a mistake. And the co-pilot, which Miguel is doing right here before your very astonished eyes. So thank you, and give him another round for he to get started. And I'm sorry about that. I'll apologize for later on. Late storm in the annex. 
one this morning thunder and lightning frankenstein returns trods up the hill for continuation school brooding children greet him two this morning ice on the deck from hail too early for a frozen daiquiri <laughs> The theme is change. Yes. 41818. Change in the pocket. Chump change. A few dimes. Pennies galore. A nickel for your thoughts. <laughs> Two. Cart that statue away from here. Wrap it up and haul it out. Confederate generals, slave traders, quack doctors, and Indian killers are not thought well of around here. Not anymore. Oh. Oh. Three, change mind, change beliefs, change routes, change jobs, change titles, change definitions. This line needs revision, change words. <laughs> Four, change regimes, bring the man in the long red tie down. It's broom time. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh. Hey, Peter. Jane Raddus is coming up here. Give her a nice round of applause. An honored poet of many long standing years and even sitting and vacationing years. I know, I've known Thank her you. since I was a small boy. Oh, wow. Well, not really, but I just like saying that. <laughs> what you want? She's got a page in swaddling calls. Swaddling? Yes. All right. He swaddles a lot. Thanking my lucky stars. I thank my lucky stars that I live in this beautiful city that is changing. I thank my lucky stars for my ex-husband who got me out to San Francisco, even though we divorced soon after. I thank my lucky stars for my cat, Natalie, even though she brings fleas into the house and I have to take Benadryl. <laughs> I thank my lucky stars that we had enough to eat when I was a child, though I heard about the Depression era eating and my mother still stretched the meatloaf recipe out with oatmeal. I thank my lucky stars that I can look up at the stars. And even though they are far away, I feel, I feel their sparkling energy shedding light upon me, multitudes of diamonds, and I glow in the dark. Most of all, I thank my lucky stars that I'm getting old. For what is the alternative? <laughs> This is timely. Death and taxes. Oh. I was pretty certain of one, now I'm certain of the other. <laughs> it has struck with such force. I know whence it came and the reason. It strikes everyone, everyone on earth. No one is spared. Is it okay to go? Have I done my work? All was taxed. All things considered, the dialogue has been meager, the wage not enough. Always wanting, death comes and the taxes are waiting. Or is it the other way around? No matter, both final, no argument for me, acceptance. At one with both, there are three of us here, bound together forever. Walking towards the river Styx, ending up dead and in death. Or is it the other way around? Thank you. <laughs> Wow, Nightingale. And then the next the next uh, five, we have Buford, then Edward, then Tommy, then Lisbeth, David E., then Dieter Van den Pants. That's me. And then uh, Richard, the Sanderell Sanderell, before our feature. Just so you know who's coming up and when. Uh, <laughs> We passed like a mischief towards at the temple, just as a sign on the cross. Professor, your daughter has brought in a tramp. Fence you from the gold mine, of course. And you, on the wrong way, on the false way, you stand at the end. I saw 
your Valetonian. It's like as if swaddled in thousand percent from poet's wounds, a baby poem. You search in the cell with your lasering deed, enigma of enigmas of vibrasms sound. It's better if falling myself as a seed, I climb this world through and around. And you uh, split this world as a goblin. Hush, hush. Just yesterday, having a talking and missing the can with my cigarette ash, I burned on your daughter, her, her stocking. There, under the horse hoof, I stood overnight and looked at the statue, no blinking. Two men asked me, what are you doing? Not much, I answered them, just a thinking. I bring to your, da your daughter some nylon tights and a little something, this player was pushing a fob when in his tilt card he grasped young Tatar females. You listen to me. If I get to the point, a jerk fired out just recent, perhaps in some dive bar you wrote a joint, but you know my daughter is Decent. Don't you dare to creep in my realm with reasons confusing, confusing results. Go and read on the door my office hours, please, and man up, because that's what you need. Daddy. <laughs> he is simply a sweet dude, a clone, Aksasha. Please cut it out. Get lamp in my attic, coffee, of, um, sit down and uh, let your legs spread about. And you jump in the hammock as if have, having mocked a panther in love. All aboard, from behind the door, the tobacco was smoked, the an asthmatic cough was heard. And I was opening at your stomach a goose plumlet of the epos and hand flare of the gentle sonnets, loving your milkness and shadows. How uh, silent has cleaned after a while and slipped by the path of good mothers, and it was decided that you are my wife with bells and unchangeably rather. The face of your nanny was covered with wrinkles like a <coughs> book or uh, like the open book of the fate. You nervously handed me the gold ring of a long, of a big like a life, long wait, and in it a Solomon's inscription that all passes could be traced. The burgers were smoking. You on your roll before your father was faced. The old man, in fact, was a cheerful lodge, a swifty and crafty burger, with such a nanny and dad as a coach. I would be a lucky beggar. I didn't first for glory, but it was known this crank has a prominence for this. Not without reason, his gold dome <laughs> has spread in the early circles, and I was <laughs> tearing off a violet onion and uh, filtering Swedish pap to 
feel uh, ultrasounds in my audience and to bloody the world with a rap. I entered your heart as a god, a black gap of darkness deepest, but you beheld at your own legs the stray mongrel of intrigues. You wanted to live this life and as nimbus madonnas of grace and pity to be multiplied in million beings or over the concrete ball of the city. How many lilacs I tore since then and made my feast nice facing, I don't know, nirvana, more brighter than this night all blubbered racing. I came from my girlfriend when something green whistled ahead with a puff. From my heart a, a fullness and from my finger the ring were blocked at once with a cuff. So. And I'm Dale. Buford is coming up next. Give him a nice little round as he comes up. And then we've got uh, Edward, Tommy, Elizabeth, David E., me, the sand around, and our feature is stellar and galactic. Galactic, yeah. And stellar. Galactic. Galactic. Yeah. Galactic. Yeah, that's good. Galactic. Okay. I have a, I have a poem from newspaper that someone gave me called the People's Tribune. Written by a guy named Rick Wood from Campbell. The kids heard the sound. The kids heard the sound, looked all around, suddenly blood on the ground. Time to make a change. She's only 17, but I'm listening. Time to make a change, her best friend died. She was buried today, only 16. All the screams will have, will last her time here. She's not going anywhere. Listen to what they say, because they were here and will have to remember forever. Uh, similar thing happened to me when I was uh, also 17, my best friend killed himself. Uh, so anyway, there's all those joyous things. This isn't very joyous either, but here it is. The president bombs. The president bombs with his great big everything. It's, quote, fun, unquote, living in the USA. All men have been in charge here politically, though there should have been a woman this time. So we continue both in cold and hot-blooded war. I have nothing against men except I think that a woman's touch would be better and maybe more organized. Michelle Obama next time should be nominated and win. Yeah. Thank you, Bert. Yeah, and my cue. And my cue. The honorable Timothy Future Professor Ed Mike Q. He's, the, the he's professorial. Poet of the elders. Poet of the elders. The house of the house of elders. Kangaroos look like giant mice, heavy in the hindquarters, like they're the lost tribe of marsupial lawyers escaped from a late 21st century gene splicing accident and evolved back. Downward to now because of radiation reversal. Sometimes, sometimes they look like deer or even Eohippus Oh, that was the first horse, and that looked like a pig. And I have a theory. 
but it's nothing I can prove. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Some more short ones. Uh -huh. right. Green thing. Hush, Vanessa. Life is green. What looks like a weed thing may be a string bean. What looks like a twig thing may become a lemon tree. What seems unpromising at first may end up quenching thirst. And you always think things come too slow and never come fast, but growing takes time, and the best may shuffle in last. More short ones. Always. A bright lad, but touched with a fairy wand of dyscalcularia and dyslexia a tad, I had to figure ways to prognosticate the up-the-road problems I would make. I think I learned to run with the twists when my love for words and ideas led me to poems that were spittle-shite, but harbored a pony in the pile somewhere, there to be dug up and recognized and disclosed even when it was withheld, because that itself is a form of disclosure. I see it the way I understand con and understood confession in the Niagara Falls childhood, that it defaulted you back into being pure, sweet, and worthy of fresh bed linen. Another baby one? Uh, it takes forever which is an explanation of how to build a life. It takes forever because life is built from the inside out, from the bottom up, but you do it upside down from the top, like you're digging a hole when you're really building a frame and hanging a skin around. That is from the inside out. When it's upside down and the light isn't so good, and everything has to be tilted and turned well, I can tell you, it's hard. <laughs> the San Francisco Mind Walk, this menu I call my life has just raised its prices again. <laughs> Plus, I don't want all that hotsy totsy food anyway. How about a simple ham and cheese on sourdough, a cup of pea soup, tomato salad, red wine, finish up with cherry pie or sliced peaches, then another glass of wine? Well, now I read my experiences backward forward. I'm a palinode set to a charge of misinformed dances tumbling one after another, a self-affirming anthem heap, and it's a mind walk. Well, will you walk with me? Thank you. Thank you. Got. Oh, Tommy Abercola Maker coming back to the open because he was the uh, keynote. Then the keynote comes back and does his own work. So give him a round of applause. Four square for our penultimate triangle. So I'm going to do a little monologue, original monologue. Don't get old in America. Cross you really out of luck. Wah, wah, wah. Unless you're just a rich old guy with a whole, whole lot of bucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry, she'll get good care there. It's the best facility in the county. I checked it out on the internet. What else could I do? She was leaving the stove on, forgetting to lock the door, playing the TV too loud. The neighbors were complaining to the landlord. She was gonna be evicted for Christ's sakes. She's getting more and more hard of hearing. Her sight's not that great either. And her hearing, it's going. Move her in here? I wish I could. There's no room, and I have enough to take care of. Two kids, a job. I can't count on Al, he's never around. The business trips are killing him. There's so much I wanna do with my life. There's just no time. Maybe when the kids are grown, it's not like it used to be. Old people could live with us. 
sit out on the steps when it was warm, cook the traditional meals, help with the kids, tell them stories. Kids today don't want to sit with their grandma. They want to play video games, watch Netflix, hang out with their friends. Besides, nobody sits out on the steps no more. It's not that kind of neighborhood. There are no other old people around here. I feel bad that I don't get to see her as much as I want. I try. The last time she was asking for something, I couldn't figure out what the hell it was. Probably something we tossed out when we cleaned her place. She had too much stuff. I gave a lot of it away. She's not gonna need it no more. She said she wanted to go home. I told her she lives there now. But she insisted she had to go home. She mentioned that house on 10th Street. You know, the one we lived in when we were kids. That house was torn down a long time ago. Remember, Papa sold it to that realtor. They built expensive condos there. We moved to that other place. I never wanted to move. I argued and argued with your papa, she said. Did you take your meds today, mama? Ah, uh, they make me drowsy. I can't think straight, she said. Well, take them anyway. The doctor knows best. It makes me crazy that she's so stubborn. What? What are you saying? Look, if you're so concerned about her, why don't you take her? You have that room in the back of your place. You haven't even gone to see her. What do you mean you don't have time? You're single. You keep telling me you're looking for something to do with your life. Why not take care of mama? Think of all she did for us. She sacrificed us. She sacrificed a whole lot. Always put us first. And now she's in that awful place. All those old people just sitting around gives me the creeps, and she keeps asking to go home. What am I supposed to say? That she doesn't have a home no more? That I took it away from her? That we've become a heartless bastard of a society that treats old people like an inconvenience? That we can't wait until they die so that we don't have to feel guilty no more? I'm sorry. It's just that when I look at her, I know I'm going to end up in the same place someday. And you know what? I deserve it. Thank you. Lisbeth? Yes. Elizabeth Bailey, and then we have uh, David E, the me, the Richard Sandro. Give her a round. She hasn't been here in a while. One short one. Just get really close to the mic so we can get really close. To yeah, the yeah. Mic. The mic likes you. No, it doesn't. It does. Uh, I'm trying to be honest. Well, we like you. We want to hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well done. Well done, yes. Uh, ledger. A ledger is used for accounts, records, transactions, income, outgo, bound sheets of paper with inked facts of what was owed and what was paid. A ledger is used in angling, catches fish when they take the bait, too late, in go, out come, an angle well played. A ledger is used to build a scaffold, horizontal support to vertical poles to check the balance. A ledger is a flat stone slab to seal a tomb, closes the books, final reckoning of accounts, what you took and what you gave. Thank you. Wow. Interesting timing, that one after that one.
Yeah, yeah. It's like it was meant to be. I'm going to need your help, so I'll yeah, tell yeah. you, I'll direct you in a minute. Okay. You'll, you'll advise me. Change. So I changed the tire on, uh, I drove a truck for 18 years. I changed the tire on an 18-wheeler once. It's the same as you use two little metal pieces of a little bend at the end to remove the tire and put it back on. It's the same as changing a tire on a bike, except everything's a hundred times bigger. <laughs> took all my strength, and it took me about 45 minutes. Changed it. Once was enough. And this piece is by, um, it was done, made popular by Oscar Brown Jr. in the late 60s. It was written by Albert Collins. It's called but I was cool. I always live by this golden rule. Whatever happens, don't blow your cool. You've got to have nerves of steel and never show folks how you honestly feel. I lived my whole life this way. For example, take yesterday. A breeze home, happy bringing her my pay. Her note read, so long, sappy, I have run away. I threw myself down across our empty bed, and this is what I said. I said, oh, 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 oh. but I was cool. <laughs> So I went for the road at Adam on that bar. I wound up so loaded I tore up my car. The judge, he threw the book at me, and when I read the sentence there, I said, Oh, 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 oh judge, oh, but I was cool. <laughs> so I said, She's the only one that I have to thank. And I found her and pulled my gun and fired point blank. The shot whistled right past that woman's head and killed my hound dog dead. Oh, 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 oh. But I was cool. As they carried me away, I was over her to stay. Say, I was overheard to say, be cool, stay cool, keep cool, cool. <laughs> Albert Collins. You made a, a signal, right? Yeah, I want to, I want to, when I got 30 seconds left, just put your fist up in the air, please. <laughs> like this? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I can see yeah, it? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you know, not, we understand this and we are, we are good. <laughs> So these all have change in them. Now this first poem is short, but I have to tell you that it was the product of a workshop as several poets were sitting around and as they read, different people wrote down one word that they thought was the interesting, interesting word in what they were saying. 
and we got about 20 words, and then we had to use uh, those words in a poem, and this is my result. Can we do that next week? That sounds awesome. It is awesome, as you'll see anyway. So now, this is why the title is so strange. Approximation of Friendship. <clears throat> Making one honestly true blue dragon would be amazing enough. But if your homework was to make a whole darned universe full of them, well, you'd be wanting help. But a wizard couldn't do it. You'd need a god to whom this whole job would be like unto the movement of a sand grain, tiny and unseen, inadvertently swept out over a door sill, gods, not yours, where it would become affixed to the pink goo on a lost watermelon seed that had been lying there in the dappled shade on the infinite back porch for some time now. And although that story might go on and on, which it does, <laughs> your phantom crisis would thus come to an end and your head could settle into your fluffy pillow, all comfy cozy, whereupon you'd snuggle into sleep. Sweet dreams would go with dancing in your head and your heart would ease into wonderful serenity. <laughs> and this also also changed. It was called You Say, because that's the first two words, but I made it a thing. You say you are searching, that you cannot find it, and you are lost. Listen, grasshopper, love is not a battleground where the bleeding losers are left strewn about to beckon for death's welcoming rap, longing for a final gentle word or touch from God. And I do not serve the angels. They have just about everything they need by now. As for you, however, aching in mind, body, or soul, who have that acquired taste for, for love, the thirst that seemingly draws one out of one's mind. I'll tell you what, you can find it simply enough. Go give nourishment to all tender beings. Feed every wide mouth. Quench all thirst for love and love as you would be loved right where you are. Let your happiness wander no more, no matter where you go, and so be requited. Let your beautiful lips and supple, passionate flesh open sweetly to all the love you can imagine. Yield to its want and disseminate all those vital gifts you have upon this magnificent world of ours. Oh. Hey. And now just to end on a humorous note, it's also very short. This, this is my, this is an infamous Ahem. Ode to P, just so you know. Get ready. Partially written in a bathroom. Ode to P. Bless this water that has passed through me. Bless this water on its way to the wine dark sea. May this water catch a moonbeam's glint just so to shimmer in the eyes of a beauty's ardent face a gal. Bless it in all the waters with which it flows and blends. Bless that in all the air in which its mingling vapor ascends. <laughs> By this means, bless the seven winds which carry it away over the seven seas to mountains, farmlands, every hill and dale, and into coastal fogs where it precipitates from trees. Nor forget sunset where its gleaming prism catches the sovereign's blazing rainbow hues, or in the moon's silvery light, plays it at the limb of our pellicle of atmosphere to cast an eerie halo of high, austere, icy delight. Mm -hmm. Bless this water that once was I, that once was a part of my heart, mind, and I. Bless this water from the one cup we share. Bless the passing of excess to spare. Yes, blessings pour each drop from the sky to clothe the world in the greenery we espy. Forever a river flows through us within. Thus do I offer unto thee 
this overwrought and singular ode to be. Thank you. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. My mother thanks you, and my sister's best friend's cousin's uncle's second door neighbor. Thank you. And now, and oh yes, yes. Now we have ah, ham ham. Yeah. Mr. Sandrell, the Sandrell, known yeah. as Richard Sandrell, otherwise yeah. the Sandrell. Give him a round of applause. Backed up by David. Or the cursive writer. The cursive writer. Thank you. Piggy's first. Piggy's first, and uh, he's going to accompany me on two, David, and uh, in the middle one I'll do myself. Okay. <clears throat> the first one is called Piggy's. <laughs> We be piggies. That's us. We be piggies. Watch, walk, down, up streets, dropping whatever we won't carry or put in garbage. Can't carry it? Drive it. Dump it. Why care? Flora, fauna, waterways, swamps, rivers, lakes, oceans, choke. Were life's forms tops? Everything answers to us. We do our little piggy dances, squeal our little piggy squeals, tear, rut the lands. I'm a little piggy getting fatter, fatter, fatter. We're cute little piggies. Everyone loves and feeds us. We're so happy and pink. Piggy, piggy, piggy. Such clean little piggies. But everything around us gets trashed, mentally, physically. That's what makes these little piggies happy. Stay clean, immaculate, snouts with ring flags, waving, farts bursting in air. <laughs> Praise the Lord, pass the collection plate. We publish names, we know who's a piggy and who is out. <laughs> yeah, baby. Little piggies. Placid, placid. As you know, USA means USA. I gave us a name. USA and citizens, for all you claim you will do, you disappoint. Most are truly flaccid, placid, purposely ignorant, uneducated. For all the education, dumb all over. That's why 60% of poop, that's right, 60% of who believe that the Bill of Rights is com commie propaganda. Your politics ravages right? you, flora, fauna, and you can't even get it up. Placid, placid as shit and fracking water is used to grow our food. Solutions to problems seem to be banning. Just get rid of it, it'll go away. Free speech. Kill it if you don't agree. That way we stay ignorant when the enemy smiles, kills you when your back's turned. So much banning these days, your day is bound to come around. What will you do when they find that no one else abounds? Everyone is banned. Ho, 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 ha, ha. Come to our local banning weekly. You will know then who really are the fools. Yeah. And au contraire. Oh contraire. Rumor has it it's Jesus who's a contraire. Just saying, passing it along in the finest of traditions. If it's true, would they still come? Just asking to see if there's any subtraction addition before all is gummed. You know how well things work when things are fixed, immovable, static. Better get it right or stop this fruitless, pointless, ineffectual, vain exercise. The dance does not flatter you. Your language befouls your mouth. Your ears change what is said to other meanings. Feelings not felt. Sight drops out. This is normal in USA, contraire of the word. Yeah, Richard Sandrell. Sandrell. Yeah. All right, now 
we come to this particular point in the evening, this juncture, this time, can I introduce a, the feature of the evening, the sitting right over Please, here. Please, let's not get too Baroque. I will not get Baroque. Like my mom said, I'm so Baroque I can't pay attention. <laughs> That's an old joke, I'm almost as old as I am. Anyway, Martin Hickel, yeah. our feature of the evening. Yeah. has been featured here before. I've seen him around in different places. Yeah. He is the person who has organized the Marin Poetry Festival several times, right? Didn't he? In the distant past. In the distant past. Not so distant past. I still remember it. And I be not that young. Oh, and sorry. You killed the dinosaurs, so. Well, you know, they had it, they had it coming. They moved in my neighborhood. to be here. <laughs> anyway, that was all the, uh, the uh, Syrians. They did that. The Syrians from Syria, not the Syrians from the country Syria. Syria, the star. Sirius, thank you. We owe them, they owe us. The dog star. Anyway, back to Martin, who distracted me mightily. A fine poet. I'm going to say these very simple sentences so he can't argue with me. A fine poet. A person who has different styles of humor, really, when you think about it. Sometimes he is satirical, sometimes just plain silly, sometimes he jazzes it up in a way that you don't have a hard, have a hard time defining. But the quality of the work, <laughs> what goes into it, is really quite amazing. Sometimes it seems very, very simple. You look at it on the page, oh, this is like simple vocabulary, but the way he puts it together makes it a little more interesting than you might. Martin Hickel. We honor you, you honor us, your presence is welcome and wonderful. Give him a round of applause, please. I'm gonna set this up here, all right? Oh, thank you. Good, a big, big round of applause for Mr. Baroque. Mr. Baroque. Baroque is and Baroque does, my gosh. Well, anyway, big build-ups. My, my, my new uh, acronym is OPIT, you know, overpromise, underdeliver. Uh, oh, I like that. You've got it covered. Sounds like yeah, get the expectations up as high as possible. You're not running for office, so, are you? That's it, Lee, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's it, I'm out of here. That's all you're going to get. Uh, the most recent thing first. Thank goodness. I haven't even put in a book. And after Richard's piece, I had thought it appropriate creatures, crusted shells, accreted like coral reefs, crowding in their hundreds of millions creatures into high and low empty spaces, faceless, nameless humans, hoping on hope alone to what? Float us alone, above the bottom, if not to the top, as near the top as the top will allow. Oh. Come on, you guys, let me up there. I do so wish to join you. Yes. All right. This is the commemorative souvenir edition of a chapbook. You're, you're, you're free. I will offer to you the right side. You might show them. Um, oh, yes. Please. Vanna White here will display the... Oh, beautiful. We love the layout. What a wonderful That's, that's the way it was supposed to come out. But the, but, the, but the test model was like this. And I was like, you know, this is great because it has big type. <laughs> always, always be quitting, always give up. Turn away quickly, enough is enough. Always be laughing or crying, your choice. Always feel something, use your inside voice. Always be looking for what comes along. Always be ready to break out in song. Always keep hoping there's always a chance. Always be open to meet that first glance. Always be closing if the deal is your game. Always be stealing if thief is your name. Always be smiling, you know how to smile. Always be hurting. It'll feel good in a while. Always be living for those who will die. Always be trying. At least you tried. Always look for the bright side of night. You may not find it, but it's the best side. Always be there for that call from a friend. Your help is theirs to ask of again. Always walk like you know where you're going. Always ask when lost. Always be showing. Always believe a better way can be found, and if it cannot, find another way round. Always trust, no matter how sorely used. Always keep safe, and if danger, if in danger, keep true. Always know you have more than yourself. Always love and support someone lucky else. 
Always see we are threads woven from one. Always delight in sharing what is one. Always be wrong. Admit your mistakes. Saves a lot of time and later feels great. Always let go. Always forgive. Give the gift of your life. It's the best way to live. How's that? For you? That's 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 uh, the testimony of Brother Martin. I should tell you, you might have, for those of you who have too many empty places in your brain to remember any facts. I was Rusty Rebar. Yes. For about 15 years, I was funding a persona. And then I retired and realized I couldn't afford him anymore. <laughs> so now I'm the low rent, much cheaper to take care of Brother Martin because, you know, he's taken vows of poverty and penury and, you know, he's, he's a cheap date. Yeah. I kid you not. Pain, a terrible place to live, cold rain falling, sun burning your eyes. No one wants to talk, but they cannot stop. People try and try and tell each other, shut the fuck up. You must listen now, this is important. It goes in your permanent record. There's nothing you can do yet. Everything gets done one way or another, although for some reason no one understands, it's never enough. And whatever people do gets fastened to machines, going faster and harder, cranking out pain more quickly than ever. Distance and time disappear, tests, tortures happen everywhere all at once. Engines of punishment spin around, turning out tiny pieces of pain from places agony comes from while you and your guards smile carefully, clean your guns, before going home to bed and dream the dreams pain is made of. I always tell people don't go so fast. For flowers, the tall, thin, beautiful boy with beautiful eyes, dark as a summer lake. When a day without end stares back endlessly, arms strong and ready, holding you like water, warm and calm forever says this may be forever the last day we have together. Offers you flowers and whispers. Tells you for lovers there are no forevers, nor for lakes, nor for flowers. Trying. If you're, if you're staying afloat, no, no, yeah, if you are staying afloat, trying, feeling less useless than you feel like being, one chore giving happily away to the next so the days wash back into your wake. Those not unending waves your narrow prow makes before going down at the bow or stern depending then simply rolls over and sinks. <laughs> now these, this is actually the order in which I wrote these pretty much since the last time I was here. Acceptance. There's always an acceptance of living to be earned, whether you can find one that earns enough to be called a living. Acceptance, a provincial capital of a flyover state where God holds the door for you on Sunday and no one stays out too late. Better get to bed early. When you're not closing, better be looking ready to lend a hand to some happy, clever thief who will happily steal your efforts for his profit while he prefers you live in denial. Whether the weather is what he makes it, regardless of the storms brewing offshore, no matter the pain and puffery others must accept is due course of his obvious success. Hey, with you off in denial, he takes what he wants and sends you the bill. Why you meekly believe his is the kingdom and yours the penury unless and until you manage to move out of denial, be careful to deny he is master. Accept your fate, live his slave. His chains look good on you. <laughs> Do these chains make my ass look fat? You know, I'm not sure. Yes. <laughs> Fuck you then. Oh. Old Dirt Road. Old Dirt Road. I think this is, I think this is a, a portrait, self-portrait. Old Dirt Road. You see at once how it runs over open prairie. Maybe from an abandoned yard of a fallen barn. Or snakes up a ridge under third growth forest. Ruts of rusted logging trucks eroding into creeks. Bends around a mountain lake, mosquitoes and trout biting. Or maybe goes near all three before reaching at last the narrow pass, steep but not blocked by snow this time of year. Then heads out to shore where cliffs slew off and disappear with the flotsam and jetsam as soon you too will. Sand holds only so much. Hey, let us go down and find what the tide brought in. 
while the road is still clear. Uh, nature be nurture. We draw lines on paper, trace them in sand, put up a fence, stand by the gate, imagine an in but no way out, put names on a list, condemn those left off. Are you on the list? Run pipes, string wires, insist they not leak, write code that compiles, believe in nothing else, diagnose disease, kill it with death, pretend we know why, act surprised when we don't. Well, they took their medicine, I can't believe they croak. See ourselves as separate, though obviously not. Not believe we prepared, but forget what we forgot. Argue nature be nurture when clearly we are both. Blame stars for our fate. I sound just like Dan Brady. <laughs> Never our ghosts. <laughs> must be, must be subliminal programming coming in here. You know, he's working his way, the mind worm into our brains. What is that? Mind worm, Dan Brady. Okay. Who here is as heartbroken as I am that there's no more Craigslist personals? Yeah. Oh, I mean, come on, be honest. We're among friends. It's all right. You know, it, it's gone. It, they killed it. Well, because they passed a law and Donald signed it that says if you have a website and it's used for criminal purposes, especially sexual ones, you're liable. So I, this is, this is a found poem of misconnections, meant to be. Let someone love you just the way you are, flawed as you see, unattractive as you sometimes feel, unaccomplished as you think you are, to believe you must hide all the parts that are broken out of fear no one could ever love what is less than perfect, is to say the sun never enters a broken window that light cannot pierce the darkest room. I used to hope he'd bring me flowers. Now I buy my own. And I don't fall in love with maybe and supposed to. <laughs> Who can control anything others do? They may not even love you back. I would love to hear him say he was wrong, never meant to hurt me, that everything is better now. But that's not my choice. I can only choose for myself. And right now, I choose to think of him as a piece of my past, someone to learn from for who he is on his own journey now. And will learn, perhaps, for himself. Would I take him back, you ask? Of course. But who knows what is meant to be? I mean, there was always great reading on there, you know. I just. I have one I did it years ago. I used to do a whole suite of misconnections. W4M, of course. This is called um, Tiger Shoes. We got off at the Powell Street Station Saturday night around 8. My friend and I watched as you tied your shoes after taking off your sweater, hanging it on the railing, rocking to the sounds of the Muni Street musician. As you walked, your bag made your shirt right up, so you were showing a little low back. It made me smile. We followed you a ways, but finally lost track. Where were you going, and next time, can I go with? <laughs> Congratulations on keeping on, keeping on, on keeping going, knowing after seeing so many beginnings and middlings, those in-betweenings and unending endings to dreams that dreamt themselves almost into being, almost before fading, before seedlings could break through and grow more seeds anew. Congratulations, you still see the need for seeds and seedlings and water, still feast your eyes and dream of crops row upon row, still keep your mind dreaming. It seems there are no keeping ons, keeping on without letting go and moving on without dreaming dreams, without seedlings. Evasion is its evasion is the ultimate luxury, wealth being its own reward. And now inefficient thinkers now everyone in this room is an inefficient thinker because you all suffer from breached self esteem. This is Anne Randian <laughs> philosophy, if you can call it philosophy. And though inefficient thinkers evade as long as possible, you can add to your list of lame excuses, but I don't have to decide that right now. <laughs> Healthy reasons, ones you can afford, affordability, the measure of excuses you do not have to make, 
or more succinctly, only you who have nothing is forever truly sorry. The rich make no apologies for having left you poor. Good. Good uh, marriage. Today, children, we are going to learn about rain, where it comes from, what it means when blue skies get gray and we must choose whether we wake and stay indoors or go out to play while the world goes green and streams and rivers churn brown sweet clay of earth drips like icing licked from a cake, water pouring down on houses and trees and homeless trapped in tents or cardboard boxes just off the street and run off pools there when an ambulance waits for what happens next where a body lies cold, cold, divorced from life, like love at the end of a marriage. Ah. Encouraging, fires burned as they must, everything. Blackened hills greening with grass and agreeing what matters, matters. Flies phoenix-like out of ashes regardless and in spite of, like the way love dies just to be reborn over and over, though barely able to chaperone my own well-being. Making sure yours gets home safe through the smoke and flames we set against the night is, well, but you should get home safe. My emotional balance overdrawn, you kindly offer yours, since no one gives more than the poor, how, in fact, the homeless who cannot afford to be selfish survive. Sounds like the start of a poem, <laughs> or maybe the pitch. <laughs> you laugh. I'm sorry, but I'm a weeper, okay? You know, if I can make everybody cry, that would really be great. <laughs> Delicious. Lovers of the smell and feel of earth that first rained back that bin to turn a garden over one shovel at a time, hands that pick fruit, shuck corn, cut and stack hay. No, it's best while breakfast cooks to finish chores before the sun heats the ground and live lives and live the story of their lives. Starting at day come night, one falls easily, deeply asleep from. Anybody who has trouble sleeping didn't work very hard that day. No, there is nothing in the color of skin or nature of sex, initials after a name on a deed bearing their signature, that means more than this. We grow the food we eat, and it is delicious. Abstinence, like saintliness, may not be all that close to godliness, but the devil is always for overdoing it. And dawn on a hangover morning, sobriety never overrated the sun insistent on coming in. <laughs> How are we doing? I got like three more. Do I have time? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're good. All right. I'm, 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 I'm going fast, but I, you know these things are all exactly the same poem, so I just feel like it kind of <laughs> will run together into one melange. Night walk. You look lucky, the two of you, with few entanglements. How these... How those... Many, many close friend types deal with the obligations and intrigues, who's divorcing whom and who just lost their mind and who's off the list and who's playing on, joining many other many close, close friends until time and tide sweep aside whoever must be going. With you, it's hard enough keeping score between the same two players making the same moves, yet with sufficient variation, one never knows what the other may do next. Although your few friends always speak of you as one, names uttered together in one sentence, a constant pair for any plan impossible to imagine, separate or apart. Until who but you, walking down a road at night, could see the slender window open between your shoulders, dividing your shadows in that single silhouette by streetlight. It's there. I don't care how long you live with somebody. There's always that little thing in there. Immortal. Given the right light and water, soil and shelter, the components of what you call DNA carries all the parts needed and seeds itself into rebeginning. How else does life as we know it get around the universe? And you, like your God, in that way alone are forever immortal. However, However late in the day you set out, 
however brave you feel, however fearful, however likely you missed your chance in this last gesture, simply that, though maybe tomorrow holds yet another departure. However cold the wind, however gray the light hangs in the south, however doubtful the destination or questionable the path, however much hope springs without water, sun, and soil, flowers wither. So take plenty of water and carry a map, if only in your mind's eye, and however you begin, just in case, however it turns out, however in time you decide, please, however, find your way back to me. One more, all right. Uh, so so this, this little book is more than a 20-minute read. I'm shocked. I'm Dan. The cat waits to be fed. The news tonight is not new, but old stories from the past I've heard to death. Life gets lived, whatever the plots. Finally machined pieces are also stories. I take them apart with wrenches and sockets, but my old car refuses to go back together. When I was paid to write the news, every morning it was a miracle to come in and read the headlines. You know, those same exact stories are in the paper today. The cat goes out and comes back to his bowl. He looks several times to be sure of the story. Desire is one thing, tasting it another. Tomorrow, what can I do that will change anything? Yesterday looked likely, but the story kept changing. The cat sits and waits to be fed. That is his story. Martin, your fingerprints are dirty for telling stories. You know, your fingers you sound like a criminal. Martin, your fingers are dirty from telling stories. What does it matter whether the car starts again? It has carried you and yours far enough already. Thanks. Yeah. And you can have a copy of this. And so the ones I didn't get to. Thank you. I'm going to put this on pause so you may talk. We're going